Hi, everyone. I'm here with Nicole, the gut girl. Thanks for being here, Nicole. Thank you for having me. All right. So we're going to talk about fast food and <laughs> prices. And uh, <coughs> you said, hey, let's just do a little rant. <laughs> so we're going to just rant about fast food. And, you know, when I first started cleaning up my diet 20 years ago, I could eat certain fast food things and it was better than what I was eating. Um, and, I, you know, I would go to certain places, not super duper fast food. But now it's I mean, it's what is all this stuff being mixed with, you know. So um, you you talked about a little bit. People want cheaper fast food. Me personally, I think they want the convenience of it. Right. So they've been willing to pay a little more. There's been pressure put on fast food restaurants where they're not going to sell anything if they don't lower their price a little. But I think people are all about the convenience and laziness. You know, they don't want to fix or cook their own meals. So they drive through and, oh, that was really fast. And I heard some ridiculous statistic like 25 or 30. I don't know how accurate it is, but 25, 30 percent of all meals are eaten in the car. So yep. what are your thoughts on fast food? Oh, this makes me crazy. So I completely understand convenience. Just because I don't eat fast food doesn't mean that I'm not a busy human and that I don't like the convenience of having something done. Um, but what has really kind of ignited me was, you know, it's been all over the news the last week about how people are just demanding that fast food um, restaurants lower their prices. So these all these fast food places are now competing with a $5 menu. And I just can't actually believe that in our day and age of what is wrong with making your own food. And if you want to eat it in the car, eat it in the car, which that's not good for you either. But fast food places are only making you sick. Just the seed oils alone that come out of a fast food place with everything you eat in it, it blows my mind that you don't think you're going to be paying big pharma later in a health crisis. Yeah. Like what is that, you know, in those little ketchup packets that you tear open, what is in that? Well, and if you have to, if you think about that, we've done a whole talk on plastic. So how is that ketchup? That's probably the bottom barrel ketchup that has a ton of sugar in it, that has a ton of oil in it, is going to be put in these plastic little wrappers, heated up in a truck all the way there, and sitting out on a counter for God knows how long. That's disgusting to me. It just makes my stomach turn of what you're putting on your food. Plus, fries, and I know but I'll probably be hated for this, but fries are not only being fried in a seed oil that has been sat in a, in a bin for probably a week straight because they clean weekly. Then they're putting salts and sugars on a, on a um, French fry just to make you be more addicted to it. Yeah. And uh, look, the deep frying in fast food restaurants is, it doesn't even really matter what kind of oil they put in there. Now it is seed oils and bad oils, vegetable oils and stuff that's rancid, but they're basically cooking it in, in trans fats, right? right. Absolutely. And not, none of it will be good for you. But think about how long that sit there, how long that has sat and you just cooked your food in it. No, I see it. I do a ton of stool testing on people um, and it blows my mind how many people have parasites, how many people have H. pylori, how many people have all these different diseases going on. I always tell people on the front of a GI map test, you never want to be on page one because those are the, some of those are the ones that have to go to the CDC for reporting. And I've seen a ton of it because of how people eat. It's disgusting. And you're not thinking about that because you're thinking of convenience. And then let's take this a step further. 
most people are doing that because they have kids and they're shuffling them to one thing or another, a sports, an activity, something, but your kids are eating that too. So you're just setting them up for failure later in their health. Yeah. Do you have a lot of people come to you that are just maybe, maybe they're just a mess and do, is it because a lot of them are now I know that you specialize in, in, and you help people that can't figure out what's wrong. So I, I'm going right. to guess that most of the people come to you are doing everything right. At least they think they're doing everything right and they can't figure it out. But do you have people that are just making stupid decisions Um do you have a lot of those people? I mean, those people are easy to fix, you know, stop the fast food. But do you have a lot of people that have just made themselves so unhealthy from eating fast food and junk? Well, I say I have a lot of people who did that. Then they tried to fix it by just eating good food. But the problem is they've completely destroyed the gut by eating fast food, eating convenience, eating out, you know, all of those things then we don't feel good. Then we try to correct it. And then we think, why can't I lose weight? So I thought it would just be to be, fix my food. And that's not where it's at. You've done some damage to the microbiome now, or you've got heavy metals or you've got um, mold. I just tested a woman who would have never thought she had mold. She said one sentence to me and I thought, mm, we better test this. She, out of a marker of 14, she has nine different molds that were off the chart. She has no clue how that got there. Think about the foods we've eaten up until the point you see me. It, yeah. It's unbelievable. It is. And, um, you know, our passion is to help people. I want to get people in the gym. Just go try it. You know, move because exercise is a huge oh, wow. deal. And, and your passion is to help people understand the impact of what they put in their body. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And people don't realize sometimes it takes, you, you start with these kids and, you know, like I'm in my sixties, you know, we didn't, there weren't fat kids in school in grade school when I was in grade school, you know, the one little chubby kid, he'd be the skinny kid. Now I say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, oh, yeah. he's the skinny kid. Well, he was the chubby kid back in the, you know, 70s and late 60s when I was in school. Um, so I don't know. It, it it doesn't happen overnight. So people are eating bad diets for years and years and years. Right. And so sometimes it takes a while to correct their diet and get their body functioning right and correctly, right? Oh, for sure. And that's not just like they think it's going to be overnight. And that is absolutely not what happens. You took a long time to get here. It's going to take some correcting to get out. And there, I mean, I'd be a multi-bajillionaire if there was some smoking gun that just, boom, did it all for us. Nobody has invented that yet. It takes work. But wouldn't you say, and this is, I think, pretty encouraging because I've seen this in my life and other people's lives. Wouldn't you say it might take you 10 years to mess up your liver, but you could maybe fix it in one year? Yes. Your absolutely. body is so resilient yes. and Honestly, your body, it wants to be healthy. So that's the good news. You can probably fix it. It's going to look a year is a long time, right? Sure. A, a year is a long time to fix something in your body and to get it working right. Maybe it's two years, maybe it's three years, but you took 15 years to mess it up. Yes. Absolutely. So don't be discouraged people out there. Yes, it takes time, but we're talking years to fix it, not decades. It took right. you decades to mess yourself up, right. but it can be fixed in years. Would you agree with that? I totally agree with that. You know, it takes decades to mess it up because your body is so smart. So give it a chance to reverse it. It can do it. Yeah. And that is positive and it's exciting and people will be amazed. And 
not only does it only take maybe a year or two or whatever, people are going to notice in a month. If right. they're really strict and they're doing the right things, they're going to notice improvement in a month or two. And then when you get that improvement, now you got momentum and now it's easy to keep going and, and improve even more. So it's not all bad. It's mostly good. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, absolutely. And, and I'm seeing more and more people come to this side of things and want to do that. So I think that's encouraging. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. So Nicole, if someone wants to find out more about your programs, you guys have been watching the videos, you know, she'll give you a hundred dollars off. Just mention that you saw this, but give them again, uh, how they get a hold of you. You can reach me at the email, the gut girl one at gmail.com and all social media platforms of the gut girl NV. Okay. Thanks for being with us, Nicole. Thanks for having me.